Jeremy Harper here from H Finance. Today we're going to do a little bit of a deep dive into the Liberal First Home Buyer Scheme policy and how that's going to help out Australian first home buyers. So leading up to the election, obviously the Liberals came out with a policy allowing or supporting first home buyers who have a low cash deposit and are looking to buy their first house. So this policy was saying first home buyers, as long as you have a 5% cash deposit saved, the government can help out with the additional 15% to go towards. As you know, the uh, election's been won and done. So Liberals are back in power with a majority government. And leading up to this election, they had this promise, but this was also matched identically by the Labor government. So what we do anticipate is that when this bill does get presented to Parliament, that it will go through with support from both sides of the aisle, which is great for first home buyers. And so what we're gonna do is just have a little bit of a, a, an investigation into the numbers and, and how that's gonna benefit people looking to buy their first property. As I said, this is a policy that will allow you to put together 5% savings towards that first purchase. And the government's gonna come in with the additional 15% in equity, and that will make up the 20% deposit to go towards the purchase. Now, just keep in mind, this is equity. This is not a gift from the government. So what that means is, and we'll, we'll look at some numbers later, and, and I'll pull up some numbers on the screen. But what this means is that you'll have an 80% loan against the purchase property that you're looking to purchase. And then the 15% loan, again, it's equity, so it's not loaned by the government, but it's actually a loan with that lender. And that, that will get added to the borrowing of the 80%. So really, we're still looking at a 95% loan, but what that means is it's secured against 80% against the purchase, 15% from the government. And where's this equity coming from? So it's administered by the Housing Finance and Investment Corporation, may, may or may not have heard of it. They're pledging 500 million in equity a year. So that's gonna be working out to about 10,000 loans annually will be issued. Now we're not sure how that's gonna be issued if it's first come first serve, if they're gonna allocate by states, you know, by population, city versus rural, we really lie on the details at this stage. So we'll have to watch this space to see how that's actually gonna get administered to first home buyers across the country. Eligibility, in terms of purchase price, I'm not sure how that's gonna be, if there's gonna be a cap on the actual purchase price of the property. I anticipate that that will tie into the local state government's definition of a first home buyer purchase price. So if, if, you ref, if you're in Victoria, you refer to the state Victorian office around their definition for a first home buyer and the maximum limit. But in terms of uh, means testing from an income point of view, yes, there is. So if you're an individual, the maximum income you can have is 125,000. And if you're purchasing as a couple, that's 200,000. So that means that if you're above that, then this policy or this scheme is not available to you. Now, again, we're a little bit light on the definition of income. If that's gonna come off your taxable income off your tax return, or if that's gonna be the income presented on the bank application. Because those two numbers are gonna throw up some variances for borrowers. So we just need to keep in mind, you may or may not qualify depending on what number we look at. The policy is slated to start on the 1st of January, 2020. So that will give the government time to actually put the bill together from you know taking it from a election promise to an actual written out bill presenting to the house of reps going up to the senate and all getting, getting some royal consent on that bill so that hopefully will give the the government time to, to put that through this as i said earlier this did have support from the labor prior to the election so i anticipate that this bill will pass through without many questions first question is how does this benefit first-time buyers so you know, people with a small deposit who would typically, if they don't have other means to come up that 15% to get to the 20% deposit, they'd incur what you call mortgage insurance. And that can be anywhere between 10 to $15,000 cost for first home buyers, which get added to the, to the loan. And obviously under this scheme, that mortgage insurance gets eliminated. So that's fantastic for first home buyers. And what we've noticed is, you know, the biggest challenge for first home buyers is really getting together that first deposit. And once they've got that deposit, their repayments on that mortgage are often very similar to what they'd be paying in their monthly rent if they're out of home. And so what that means is first home buyers can stop paying a landlord rent and start to generate their own wealth and start to generate some equity in that property that they've purchased. 
So let's have a deep dive into some of the numbers, how it works now, and how this policy could help out first-time buyers. So here we've got the comparison between renting versus taking out a mortgage. So in this example, we're gonna use the example of buying a $500,000 house. We're disregarding the closing cost because that varies between states, but for first-time buyers, it's minimal. So at this stage, they're doing a 5% cash deposit, so they've saved 25,000. So we're taking out a mortgage fee for 475,000 at a 3.8% mortgage. So your monthly repayments are 2215 per month. Compare that to someone who's renting for 450 per week, which equals 1950 per month. So what we're talking about is an additional $265 per month in terms of repayments. So it's quite minimal between the two. And the first home buyer starts building equity straight out of the gate. So that's a great comparison of once you got over the hurdle of actually getting a deposit together, this is what your ongoings would look like in terms of mortgage first renting. So how does it currently work? So again, continue on with an example of a five hundred thousand dollar purchase. This scenario, the first home buyer is going to pay mortgage insurance because they've got a low deposit. So as I was saying earlier, if you have less than 20% saved, you run into what we call mortgage insurance. So again, this scenario, they've got the 5% deposit of the 25,000, gets us to a loan of 475, so 95% LVR or value of the property to, to the loan. So in this case, running some numbers, depending on the lender, you'll get stung mortgage insurance of anywhere between 15 to $19,000, which gets added to the loan and then repaid over the 30 years and amortized. So when we add those two together, the 15, it brings your loan back up to 490,000. So you're actually taking a loan to the, to the value of 98%, which is huge because you've got minimal equity in this scenario. And even at 98%, a lot of lenders would cap that out and say, actually, you need to put some more money in. So again, we'd run into that issue of a shortfall deposit. Another option that currently works, which people are using for first time buyers and will continue to use is the bank of mum and dad. So you hear that term a lot in media. So what does that mean? So again, $500,000 purchase, the first time buyers save 25,000 or 5% deposit to put towards it. So in this scenario, again, we'd take out a $400,000 loan secured against the new purchased property, so 80%. And then the 75,000 or the 15% is secured against mum and dad's property. So again, you're gonna have two loan splits with the same lender and your repayments will be based on the total loan of 475. Another option, if mum and dad are in that position, is actually gift the $75,000 in, in cash. Um, but what I would just say is that option, or, or both these options, are not available to all first home buyers because A, it, it, it's assuming that mum and dad have 75,000 in cash sitting around to gift you, or B, they've got a property with sufficient equity and circumstances to actually offer up a security for the 75,000. So again, that cuts out a lot of first home buyers in the market. And the third option is obviously, as we said earlier, saving a full 20% deposit to avoid the mortgage insurance. So in that scenario, you're going from uh, a 20% deposit of $100,000. So you're that you're saving the additional 75,000. Um, and going back to the difference between renting and mortgage and paying down a mortgage, well, to get the 75,000 it's a huge savings that you've got to burden the first home buyers with. So going into what does the numbers look like under the, the first home buyer scheme? Well, again, using the example of a $500,000 purchase, 5% uh, deposit, so $25,000 will go towards as a cash down payment from the first home buyers. Again, the $400,000 would be secured against the new purchase in, in question, so the 80% loan, and then the government would would levy up the or the 75,000 equity to put towards the the new loan. So again, you're taking out a 95% loan or 475,000 in borrowings, that's still the same amount, just where that's secured against. So 80% against the new purchase, 15% against the the equity that the buyer scheme. Again, for first time buyers, it's great cause it will allow you to purchase with a lower cash deposit, so minimum 5%. The mortgage rates will be set an 80% lending, so lower LVR. So that means that's great for first-time buyers because you actually pay uh, lower mortgage rates compared to if you're trying to borrow at 95%. Um, and the 
governments already signal they want a preference to use some of the smaller Australian lenders. So that's great for competition. The deal flow will go across the board with lenders, not just to the, to the bigger banks. So what I'd say is speak with us as mortgage brokers. We've got access to 25 plus lenders, the big banks, medium, and even banks and lenders you probably haven't heard of. So we can work through and, and figure out what's a, a great scenario for, for yourself as a first-time buyer. So drop us an email, info at hfinance.com.au or ping us on social media and we'll get back to you with any, any answers to your questions. Okay, thank you.